Falcon Heavy tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. There we hear the uh, tanks uh, being pressurized for retract, that strong back or transport erector as uh, we use to transport out. The strong back will uh, begin uh, retracting uh, here shortly and what you will see at the top of the vehicle is those arms that are around the uh, just below the payload fairing will open up and once those open strong up lower the, has started. the uh, strong back will then tip back uh, slightly in a, a few degrees and uh, getting ready for launch this morning and then as liftoff occurs the strong back will fall uh, back a little more to get out of the way as the Falcon Heavy leaves launch complex 39A. Next up, NASA launch manager's go, no, go poll. The final check to make sure the NASA team is ready for a launch. That's expected in five seconds. LM, it's the LD on the NLM net with a final status check. LD, everything's looking good on our end. Copy that. Thank you. Thumbs up from NASA again. Confirming that weather, right, was the big watch item, and that is not a constraint to launch right now. Yep, the team has uh, looked at all the data. Things continue to uh, progress very well. Weather looks really good LP. out there. NY and Dr. Dr. Lee, Comment down one. Dr. Gibson uh, says things are good. NASA is go for launch. There we okay. hear the final go for launch from Dr. Denton Gibson on the countdown net. Uh, and locks load on one side boost. There we hear the second call for locks load complete on the two side boosters. Uh, locks load is uh, finishing up in the center core of the first stage booster and then uh, finishing up uh, as we get down close to T0, the locks load on second stage. So things progressing very well, Megan. I do want to mention that Dr. Denton Gibson, this is his first launch as launch manager. Yes, uh, very happy to have him there. He has uh, been doing very well as he stepped into the NOM position from his mission management position. And uh, very happy to have him on console today as our launch manager for the GOES-U mission. Stage one, lock load complete. And there we hear the call out for stage one. All three boosters now have RP-1 and locks on board. So we are just uh, waiting for the remaining locks to fill into the second stage locks tank. And Falcon Heavy will be tanked and ready for launch. And we expect them to finish fueling the second stage with liquid oxygen in about 20 seconds. With this stage call out, two, locks load complete. the Falcon Heavy rocket is completely filled with 2.8 million pounds of propellant. Team has done very well to get to this point. Uh, we are so happy uh, of everything's going. And, and as you can see on the screen right there, weather outside at Launch Complex 39 looks very good. We're about a one minute and 50 seconds from launch. And the team's progressing down to get the flight computer uh, ready to take over uh, the launch vehicle. As you see there, Megan, the uh, liquid oxygen being vented out, uh, the plume from the humidity here in Florida. Uh, we get to Ground see that uh, br uh, looks like it breathes, and we just heard the call out for ground gas closeouts, which is finalizing and venting the ground lines that fill the uh, pressure vessels in the Falcon Heavy, so that uh, they're closing off all the ground connections, turning everything over to internal, getting the Falcon Heavy ready for liftoff. And in a few seconds, we will arm the flight termination system, and Falcon will be in startup. Falcon Heavy is in startup. And that means the Falcon Heavy's flight computer is now in control and will guide the rocket through the last seconds before liftoff. SpaceX launch director, go for the launch. All systems are go to send NOAA's GOZU satellite into space to keep a watchful eye over the Western Hemisphere, helping scientists and meteorologists to issue timely warnings and forecasts. T minus 30 seconds. This will be NASA's Launch Services Program's 16th mission for NOAA. Great partnership over the years we've had. Looking forward to this launch. 15 seconds. And here we go. 10, T -minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello? 
Go, go, you. Liftoff of Goes You, NOAA's new to, newest Vehicle weather satellite to monitor the Earth and Sun in high definition. Engines look nominal. It's looking good as you see uh, the Falcon Heavy uh, soaring towards the heavens. Uh, all 27 engines powerfully lifting goes you on its trajectory and ascent into space. A beautiful shot as we track telemetry nominal. the rocket from the ground here. The rocket is now powering down for Max-Q. Max-Q is the moment of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. Max-Q expected at 1 minute 7 seconds. The vehicle is now supersonic. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. Traveling faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. There we heard the call for Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the Falcon Heavy. The vehicle still performs very well, looking all the data looks nominal. A great shot from on board the rocket, looking down on the Earth that it is leaving. <laughs> And all 27 Merlin engines providing 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Coming up at T uh, plus 2 minutes and 28 seconds, the side boosters are going to shut off while the center core will continue on. Wow, what a shot there of again all 27 Merlin engines firing off. 5.1 million pounds of thrust. The uh, side booster cutoff will be referred to as BECO. We'll hear that call out. And then when the center core shuts off later in flight, we'll hear that called as main engine cutoff or MECO. Side boosters are performing, uh, all, all boosters are performing nominally. Everything's looking good with the 27 Merlin engines. Side booster separation confirmed. There we see Biko and side booster. MVAC chill. Side booster uh, separation. The MVAC is being chilled down, getting ready for ignition. Once the center core. Uh, and why boost back startup. And there we heard the call out for boost back startup. A lot of things happening here. So again, we have the two boosters that are going to be returning to uh, the Cape here, landing at landing zones one and two. These two boosters have three burns, so we're seeing a boost back burn All now. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Essentially, these boosters have flipped back and are returning on a path to the Cape here. There will be two more burns, a, a reentry burn and then a landing burn. And these are going to provide quite a show for folks that are here on the Space Coast because you're going to hear those sonic booms, Mick. Yeah, absolutely. We are uh, looking forward to those sonic booms as the side boosters landing, landing zone one and two. Uh, we're about uh, 26 seconds away from main engine cutoff and the center core separating. Once the center core separates, we will then have MVAC, which is the Merlin vacuum engine for space, uh, start, start up and get ready for what we call SES-1, second stage engine start number one. Today we have three burns for this mission uh, to get Gojus on its way, and this will be NY the first, back shut down. first of those three burns. PY boost back shut down. There we hear the two side boosters have uh, boost back shut Mico. down. And Stage now we're going to watch confirmed. live footage there. There you go of Miko. Again, the core and back ignition. booster separating from the second stage and the MVAC engine on that second stage lighting up. You see that on the right side of your screen. We're about four seconds from fairing deployment. Fairing again is the two, All the two halves. to follow nominal trajectories. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we have confirmation the fairing has deployed. Uh, the fairings will, are brand new fairings for the Goju mission, and they will fall back to Earth and be recovered uh, by the recovery ship uh, Doug. But SpaceX will look to uh, reuse those fairings on a future flight, along with the side, bo side boosters. As we see there, they're coming back uh, to Earth to land on landing zone 1 and 2. Uh, so things are progressing very well here. We are about a minute and 
23 seconds uh, from uh, what we call the entry burn, where the uh, plus Y and NY uh, booster side boosters will uh, fire up their engines to start slowing down the vehicle as it gets ready for landing. Yeah, a lot to watch. Again, the left side of your screen, we are tracking the boosters that are coming back to the Cape here. On the right side of your screen, that is the MVAC engine on the second stage that continues to burn as it makes its way into the correct orbit to drop off goes you later today. Stage one FTS is saved. There we hear the autonomous flight termination system was saved as it returns back to Earth, uh, making sure the vehicle is uh, in a proper configuration for landing. The second stage is currently taking GOES-U across the Atlantic towards Southern Africa. And this is the first time, actually, a GOES satellite is launching on a Falcon Heavy, only the second time NASA's Launch Services Program is using a Falcon Heavy. Yeah, we launched our first Falcon Heavy with SpaceX uh, back in October of 23 with the Psyche mission. Uh, and the side boosters, actually, that, that we used on the Psyche mission will be used for our future mission, Europa Clipper, this October. So brand new hardware today for GOES-U, and everything looks like it's performing very well. All the telemetry, everything looks nominal for the flight so far today. Yeah, those uh, who typically watch our PYMY launch broadcasts. Entry burn startup. There that we heard the call out for entry burn startup. The vehicles are slowing. You can imagine this as a um, brake on your car where it starts slowing the uh, uh, boosters back down very quickly. Um, as PYMY they, uh, entry burn shut down. And there we hear the shutdown as the boosters have slowed down. Next thing we will see is the landing PYMY burn. PYMY FTS is saved. At landing zone one and two. Beautiful All imagery vehicles again. to fall in nominal trajectories. From the ground as we track those boosters, make their way back to the Cape. We saw some birds fly <laughs> into the camera's view as hey, well. Everybody wants to see the landing exactly. of the side boosters. <laughs> uh, as we said earlier, Megan, these, the landing will be exciting um, for, for a lot of people to see. Getting uh, two side boosters coming back to landing zone one and two, we will get those sonic booms. Uh, I know that uh, you here in the MDC, we will UI get some. UI NY transonic. We will Stage get two the, FTS is saved. We will get some uh, loud uh, shaking right here in the Mission Director Center. I know a lot of people right here in Brevard will be excited when they hear the uh, sonic booms. Uh, UI NY my, landing burn. Landing burns has started Stage two up. The terminal guidance. Wow! Look at that as it guides its way back down. Woo! Just heard the two sonic booms here in the room. PY NY landing light deploy. Our monitors that. shaking that as we watch amazing. these two that boosters is just land. Awesome to see the two side boosters choreograph their way down to landing zone one and two. PY NY landing confirmed. We have successful landing of the two side boosters. Everybody looks great uh, on the on the landing zone one and two as MVAC continues its mission with this uh, first burn. And there we heard the call out for Seco which is Seco 1, uh, second stage engine cutoff for this first burn. And uh, things look very nominal good. The trajectory insertion. looks, we hear the call out there that nominal orbit insertion, everything looks great on the uh, second stage performance for this first burn, Megan. Yeah, and what you're looking at now, everyone on your screen, is the trajectory for uh, the second stage of the Falcon Heavy with Goes U. So again, it's making its way across the Atlantic towards Southern Africa. This was the first of three burns for the second stage. The second stage will now coast for about 18 minutes before reigniting for its second burn. And if you look at the bottom of your screen there, we have a progress bar full of our milestones that we're covering during this live launch broadcast and SES2 that is that second burn we are talking about that will happen in again about 18 minutes from now to get into geostationary orbit today we're going to drop this off here and what we call a geotransfer uh, that giving uh, a pinpoint uh, area and giving more life to goes you so things look uh, very good uh, so far as we continue to move forward, waiting for goes you. You to payload separation in. confirmed. There it goes. We're getting a round of applause here from the spacecraft team behind us as we watch goes you float into space. That is an incredible view. Yeah, uh, seeing wow, goes you with uh, Earth uh, there in the background. Uh, I, as you said, this is a first for goes you seeing real time deployment. 
I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm in awe. This I is, know. <laughs> this is very, yeah, really. very neat uh, photo to see there. Yeah, beautiful imagery, uh, an opportunity for the team to really see their work come to fruition, right? Uh, uh, teams have been working on the GOZI satellite with SpaceX to get us to this moment right now that we are watching live on NASA TV. Um, it's just wonderful to see their work um, at the beginning of its mission, really. I mean, this is the last mission milestone that we're covering on uh, this launch broadcast, but this is just the beginning for Gozio. Oh yeah, there's a lot of work still to do. The team it will partially deploy uh, solar arrays to start getting the batteries on board uh, power positive and, and charged. Uh, and they've got some other things they need to check out, uh, as we heard from Alec earlier, getting ready uh, Gozio to uh, move into geostationary uh, orbit and uh, things are looking really well. I, I, that's just amazing, the video, the live video from there. Uh, you know, I, I've been doing this for almost 30 years, and I'm going to tell you, I enjoy watching the rocket launches. Every one is great, but this is really, really cool to see uh, live spacecraft separation for this long of this uh, important satellite. Yeah, and to think about it again, wrap your heads around the fact that we are watching live video from 20,000 miles above the Earth of this incredible tool being deployed into space. As you were saying, Mick, uh, you know, the first steps after.